Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Say Trading Frank. This is Sunday, September 19th, 2016. I'm sorry, September 18th, 2016. Approximately 12, 10, uh, 12 p.m. Um, here on the East Coast. This is a advanced coaching session for ACS members, ACS students. Session will be recorded and posted on the YouTube channel. Um, for access to um, paid advanced coaching students and down the road we'll open it up for the public but this is relevant to the people who have you know gone ahead and uh, uh, and, and and paid for these uh, uh, for these sessions it's only right that uh, they get the first uh, access to these things um, on a live basis full disclosure this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice so let's try to make this next hour, an hour plus, um, constructive and get straight to the point here. We'll open it up for Q&A um, uh, as we always do, so I can answer some direct questions on things that members are, um, that members, uh, 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 are curious about. So, hey Jules. Um, so first and foremost, let's just quickly refresh our heads with these market chart patterns which constantly evolve and dissolve for a better choice of words you know they come on uh, uh we we identify them we try to we try to do our best on making some strategic uh technical um forecasts based on that and then all of a sudden you know we, we see it working then dissolving another pattern comes up that's just the nature of technical analysis technical analysis on itself is not a science uh, it is more of a science uh, than uh, uh, than emotional trading, that's for sure. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's not nothing just like anything else in life. It's not um, it's not hundred proof. Uh, there's no you know uh, uh, there are there are uh, diehard chat technical an analysts who will basically claim that every single market move can be can be uh, forecasted, and the key word is forecasted via uh, a TA or technical analysis. Uh, but that is not totally true. Uh, you have to in incorporate a good amount of background noise in the form of um, market sentiment, which I use a lot, behavioral game theory, as I like to call it. Uh, you, you have to incorporate uh, economic uh, uh, backdrop, economic data hitting the market, uh, right, left, and center. You have to incorporate the political atmosphere, what's going on. You have to incorporate uh, seasonality. Um, and uh, and and um, uh, uh, weekly or monthly um, uh, patterns, uh, market patterns, which if, uh, which come about because of uh, money management strategy by the 800-pound gorilla in the market, which is the mutual fund industry, and then the institutional funds, which which you know which 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 are you know the next big players in the market, and then of course hedge funds. So saying all that. I would say that a good say uh, in in the way I do things is uh, I try to uh, keep as much as possible um, a, 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 a an emotional a non emotional bias as you all know uh, and it's a uh, it's not something that's uh, that one acquires as uh, as second nature right away it takes a significant amount of time. Um, to 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 get there and then you keep on just practicing it you keep on practicing it it's like going to the gym right you know you just you can just stop one day and say okay i'm really fit and you know looking good and healthy and and then everything's going to be fine you got to constantly constantly practice it and that's what i do as you know you also have to learn to adapt uh to these uh, extreme volatility in the market um and um and 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 try to incorporate these uh particular patterns and um, one second particular patterns within the context of what's going on um, there is a fallacy uh, or some sort of misunderstanding by uh, many traders that uh, just because there is a uh, terrific terrific chart setup or uh, um, or or or, or, or uh, everything measures out or when you're doing the when you were doing the structure the lines and everything else that that is a uh, almost a sure bet that that trade's going to work unfortunately it doesn't work like that uh, because the volatility in the market 
the word, the, the definition of volatility is uncertainty, right? So the point is, uh, uh, call it choppiness, you know, call it uh, crazy market or whatever people call it. The reality is that that uh, skews those patterns. Um, on a shorter term basis, it skews patterns a lot more than if than it does on a longer term basis. Uh, hi, Tim. Welcome. Uh, so the bottom line is that there is no one way, but I find that if we keep a balanced head and try to incorporate um, the technical analysis and the and most importantly uh, the chart structure, the way I draw it on top of the charts incorporate that with all the different internals which are dynamic moving back and forth that we do have a semblance of uh, rationality or more importantly we what's the best word i can use it we can harness our fear fear of the unknown is the most dangerous thing uh, in life. We know that. It's the same thing with stock markets. If you don't know what's happening in the background, if you don't understand the levels that markets can fall or rise um, and what the extremes can be, then obviously you're fearful. Um, my job here, and I've been very successful at working with many people on that matter, is that we have taken away a good portion of that fear, not the stress, we all deal with stress, we know that, but the, 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 uh, the fear of the unknown, because we're making the probabilities of what's going to happen in the market on a known basis, so that when markets drop 300 points or rise 300 points, whatever the case may be, um, you are at least not completely ignorant about what is going on. Uh, saying all that, when real money is at play, obviously, emotions take over. And we all, in one degree or another, we all, in one degree or another, some of us far less, some of, some of the people out there far more, get emotional and make very stupid decisions. And it's not, I'm not going to say it's, you know, uh, uh, I'm not just going to whitewash it and say, oh, it's no one's fault, it's the market. It's not. We have to be disciplined. This is a battle. We have to train ourselves. And that's the whole purpose of these advanced coaching sessions, to train ourselves to be battle ready. And that doesn't mean that you're going to take out every single bad guy with one sniper shot, right? It simply means that we are ready for battle. Saying all that, let's take a quick look at these patterns. Um, we have the basic, you know, uh, 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 bearish head and shoulders. We know that one. You have the neckline. You have the head, the left shoulder, the right shoulder. Before I go further into these patterns, let me just remind everyone. They don't always look so clean in the real world, right? Just the way textbook stuff in academia is not what really plays out in the real world. That's why they say a lot of college professors are the reason they're brilliant professors and everything because a lot of them haven't worked in the real world, you know. And uh, and they might be teaching you some great, you know, financial economics and, and macroeconomic theory and this and that. But in the real world, it's a lot more messier. It's the same thing with charts. I hope everyone understands that. So saying all that. Uh, you have the head and shoulders, you have the basic uh, consolidation, the sideways action that we saw for all the way through August. We played these moves back and forth, uh, roughly a 200 point move back and forth. We might be entering one of those right now. And then, you know, you, 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 you either break down or you break out. Channels, I show all the time. You all know that. Uh, we, uh, uh, and um, these, these, oops, sorry. These channels are, um, are consolidation channels if they break out. There are breakdown channels if they break down. Remember, there's always the plus and the minus, right? So generally a consolidation channel. And remember, what I'm showing you is the external chart patterns. Like to remind everyone, an old fashioned thing, there are externals, I'm gonna put that as EXT, okay? Which are these chart patterns that we're looking at. And there are internals, which are a lot more harder and take a lot more time to really fully understand. Those internal indicators can be the simplest and the most effective one that I use uh, effectively, as you all know, which is the stochastics, the fast, the slow. Uh, you, have, uh, you have vortex indicators, uh, you have MACDs, uh, you have uh, McClellan oscillators, you have the vortex indicator, and there are brilliant technical analysts out there uh, that many of you might follow, um, and many of them on stock tweets, who are really brilliant people, and they use all kinds of other indicators, and sometimes I don't even freaking understand them, okay? So saying all that, I um, I like to keep uh, 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 things simple and uh, straightforward, and uh, what works for me is what I share with people. So saying all that, you have the consolidation channel. Um, oh, and the, what I was going to say was these are the externals. The internals, 
correlate with externals all the time. And it and and so the point is that one has to one as one gets better at understanding how the internals work, then they could kind of figure out whether or not this is going to be a a consolidation breakout, which is bullish, or is it going to be a consolidation breakdown? So that's what I'm trying to say. That uh, these charts can go either ways. Uh, so the internals help us give us a better probability of what might happen. Not certainty, probability. You have a flag, a bull flag, stock goes up, you know, consolidates, breaks out. We've seen a whole bunch of those. We have pennants, also known as diagonal. Um, uh, hey, 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 Clue, hey, Clue, I'm sorry to bother you. Just, uh, and I wait. Oh, okay, go ahead. Can go I ahead. ask you a question? I, I see a lot of people see a bear flag and a bull flag, and I look it up on the Internet, but I can't quite see it. Could you explain the difference between the two flags? Yeah, bull flag is basically, you know, uh, uh, you know, stock goes up and creates a consolidation channel. Sometimes it's a symmetrical triangle, or it's a it's a consolidation like this, and that's a bull flag. So that's a bull flag. Now a bear flag is uh, is 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 uh, um, how do I explain it? Uh, it it falls, you know, it moves up a little bit. Uh, it's also known as a uh, bearish wedge, um, and and then it you know it looks like a flag. Or it looks like a consolid. It's just the opposite of this. It looks like a consolidation channel, um, and that's known as a bear flag. It basically uh, a bear flag comes off a bottom, uh, a, a falling. Uh, the simplest way to know it, Corey, is bear flag is coming off a, uh, a a falling price, and a bull flag is coming off a rising price. Okay. So. Great. Perfect. It, Thank you. It, yeah. Sorry, so, Bobby. Not at all. You're not bothering me at all. That's the whole purpose of these things. So basically, um, a bear flag is coming off a sharp rally and a consolidation channel, or or uh, sometimes a uh, a a a, a uh, asymmetrical triangle where it's kind of like squeezing in, doing that, and then it break and and then it breaks out. That's a bull flag. A bear flag is something falls really hard, uh, creates a, um, a a bear flag, which I've shown. Uh, and then and then if it and generally speaking, generally speaking, it breaks down. Now the way to, like I repeat, the way to kind of figure out whether it's a bear flag or whether this thing is going to just rip up and go higher is by uh, truly trying to dissect the internals. Things very, very oversold, uh, stuff like that. So we'll get into that. Uh, so saying all that, uh, let me get these out of here. Get the pen. All right. Uh, so here you have uh, you, you. This is this is a question of a bull flag. Now. Um, Pennant, uh, it, it thing moves up uh, and keeps on, keeps on, you know, uh, the, the, the price uh, uh, range keeps on getting tighter and tighter. We have seen this quite often um, and then um, breaks out. Again, the same story. It can also break down. And that is, uh, uh, so it can be a bull, bullish pennant like this or a bearish pennant. And, um, um, and that's something, only way that we can figure that out. Um, to, sub, to a large degree is by looking at the internals. Symmetrical triangles are the same way. The price keeps on getting tighter and tighter. Um, bears will tell you that it's definitively breaking down. Uh, bulls will tell you it's definitely breaking up. And uh, again, that's known as a symmetrical triangle. In other words, the price is constricting as lesser and lesser players are getting into the game and, and just kind of like getting really tight, also known as a very, very tight range also shown in pinch Bollinger's and stuff like that that I talk about. Ascending triangles. I've shown this before, right before we had the July breakout um, on, on the market, I've shown an ascending triangle. Ascending triangles are simply higher lows, higher lows, and uh, 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 going back to the previous highs and then a breakout. This ascending triangle on the market, which, uh, which was extremely profitable, um, was, uh, uh, was also interpreted by many out there, by many out there as, a, um, as basically a, a pennant which was gonna break down. But, called it right, it was a breakout. All we're doing now, which I'll show today, is we went way up there, when we broke out over that uh, over that uh, 2000 some level and uh, and then we came down and we are testing this multi year breakout level a chart that i've posted several times and i know many of you have seen that i should have seen that because i write in big bold letters that that was the multi year breakout level okay descending triangle i'll show you something very interesting today because the goal of this particular acs session is not to just refresh people on what's going i mean what the what these type of structural patterns are but also to be kind of ready for next week and the week after as to what's going on long-term forecast right now is dead 
I'm telling you that straight out. What we're doing is intermediate term forecast based on what information we have in hand. There is way too much volatility, way too much uh, 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 central bank and political uncertainty to make a long term forecast on the market, period. I'll be the first one to tell you. OK, so anybody who's telling you, oh, I know what's going to happen, this and that is a complete liar. Um, the bottom line is I'll lay down the lay down what I think might be going on, both on the bull side and the bear side and what the probabilities are. And we'll go from there. Now, I will also show today that what's happening with the market could be construed as a large bearish descending triangle. So just look at this very carefully. This is a descending triangle. You get a sharp drop. You get these bounces below the downtrend line. It cannot break the downtrend line or maybe breaks out a little bit and then keeps on and, and, and then falls apart. We could have a descending triangle, mind you, on the larger daily market. And I will show that today. That is bearish. That will bring us down to 2000 and possibly to 1980, which was the January, February lows in the market. So I'll show that too. Wedge continuation is basically a rising wedge. Prices get tighter and tighter. More and more late buyers come in, and then the market consolidates. This line down is not necessarily bad. This line down could be just a consolidation channel right there. Look at that. It can be like this. People like us who like to buy early, um, um, especially in very difficult times, we would probably be sellers at this point because there's substantial profits, a little bit left out there. And this consolidation triangle can also be measured by what's happening internally. Way too much overbought conditions, blah, 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 divergences and things like that. No, negative divergences. A lot of retail traders who don't spend the time and energy like all of you are doing to understand this stuff get excited right at these stops because the price action is very sexy, for a better choice of words, right? So the price action is very sexy at these things. Oh my God, look at it go, look at it go. Well, look at it go, there's a lot of internal uh, divergences which could be negative. And that's when you get this plonk down. Sure, some of you have gone through that, but with my help and stuff, I know many of you don't go through that. Um, so saying all that, uh, that could be a consolidation channel and then possible breakout. That is only if the market still has juice to move higher. This is one of my favorite because just like a, what the, 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 the ultimate motto, the ultimate principle of playing stocks or any other asset classes is what? Buy low, sell high, correct? That's it. Whether you're short, you're shorting buy high, sell, you know, uh, sorry, sell high, buy low. That's what shorts do. In the case of longs, which are basically the market overall, uh, you want to buy low and sell high. Quite simple when you, you say it in paper, all right? When you just say it normally. Very hard to do in the marketplace. We know that because we're all in it. What I like most is when I'm looking at stocks which are which are creating falling wedges. That's known, this is a falling wedge, okay? This is the falling wedge that I keep on talking about all the time on certain stocks that I see. I love buying in uh, uh, love buying uh, uh, companies which on a technical basis uh, seem like they're just going to forever go down but are creating a large technical um, pattern which is known as a falling wedge. I wrote falls, sorry. Falling wedge. And falling wedges are the most exciting because at this point some of the real dumb shorts get in there just the way some dumb longs get in up here on this rising wedge, on the falling wedge, dumb shorts get in here thinking, that's it, it's going to break down, it's over, all this stuff. In the meantime, the internals are probably showing McClellan like, you know, minus 600, just was the case last Friday, you know, and, uh, and, and they get in there and bang, they wake up, the future's up 30 points, and like, they're losing their, you know, they blow up. And this happens a lot. So the falling wedge to me is exciting because I'm playing a reasonably cheap price and that we're going to see a breakout. And this has to be incorporated with the internals, otherwise you won't know it's a falling wedge. It could be just, you know, doing this, doing this down. So this is this falling wedge from a profit standpoint to me is extremely lucrative. I've shown it several, several times on multiple stocks. And when it breaks out, it's not to say that it's going to just go back to its highs. It simply says that it would very well make a sharp move higher. It could also be a and please listen carefully, it could also be a bear flag. Okay, it could also be a bear flag. What does that mean? Here's your falling wedge. Stock refuses to go above the downtrend line, this being the downtrend line, right? 
keeps on doing this, keeps on doing this. Smart money shorts probably somewhere around here. Dumb money comes in here right at the lows. They don't know it's the low, but they think it's going to go lower because all they hear is hugely negative sentiment. All they hear is huge, you know, whatever. Everything is just deep dark, you know. So they get in here, goes up a little bit. They get excited. They short more. And the next thing you know, this thing breaks out. Now, this is not to say that it's going to all of a sudden get a trend change where it's going to just keep on going higher. This could simply be a bear flag. In other words, it goes like this, to Corey's point, it goes like this, and the channel keeps on climbing. Again, the same people here who, 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 um, who, who, who collapsed, lost this shirt. They're like, wow, now it's definite turn. That's it. It's going to go higher. They don't necessarily buy it on the breakout. They wait for confirmation. Hear me out. They wait for confirmation. Very seldom nowadays, because of the machine-driven algo HFT markets, are there real confirmations in the market. I don't care what they say out there. Confirmations and false breakdowns and false breakouts are every single day, every single week being played out in the market. Monthly confirmations are a different story. They can actually confirm a change in trend known as CIT whether or not we're going to go into a multi-month bear market and things like that. But what I'm talking about daily and weekly, trends are changing rapidly. I don't need to convince anyone. You guys see that all the time. Okay? So what bottom line is, they get in here to short, I'm sorry, to go long, and guess what happens? This is a bear flag, and they fall. At this point, these people, I don't blame them. They're not investing enough time and brain power. And a few extra dollars to really understand these patterns, they're just like, I've had it. I can't take this anymore. What do they do? They stop trading. This happens a lot across the board. And good, the less of the amount of traders, the better we do. So it's fine with me, you know, been doing this for a long time. Now, has people have people gone through an ocean where they feel so dejected that just things are just, you know, they're not understanding things and they and they just do can't they just tell themselves they can't do it? Absolutely. But hey, I'm sorry. You know, the definition of success to me is not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you stand up and keep fighting. That's life, that's trading. Double top. All right, so this is a very important feature. Falling wedge, breakout, and then determining whether it's a real breakout all the way up. I generally go ahead and will buy, not this break breakout of this downtrend line. I'll be buying down here based on my internals. If I see a positive divergence on the internal, then I will go in there. Yes, it's risky. Yes, I might be 24 hours early. I don't care because it works. Now, does it work every single time? Absolutely not, but it works most of the times. This is the hardest time to buy, and this is the least amount of traders who buy around here. And that's a fact. Saying all that, double top. Very simple. Double top doesn't look as clean in real life, but that's what it is. Double top breaks that neckline, you know. Double bottom, dragon bullish. This is dragon bearish. Dragon bullish is nothing but a W formation. I just showed dragon bullish on the market just within the past week. Okay, dragon bullish doesn't mean that it's going to be the start of another bull market. Let's throw that mentality out the door. All the market's doing is trading between some very tactical structured ranges with extreme volatility. Forget about, oh, are we going up to 20? Are we going, uh, the next leg of the bull market started or the next bear market started? When we start thinking like that in a big way, we never make money in the middle. And please, incorporate that in, in your brain. It's coming from somebody who goes through this every day, who's been doing this for years. I'm not the smartest guy on the block, I'll tell you that. Okay, but I'm certainly the quickest learner that you'll ever meet. And I do have a passion for what I do, not in the sense of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a good, I like, you know, nice colors on my charts. I have a passion for fully understanding the dynamics of economics, finance, how these things work, how the political game theory works within the context of the market. So that's it. Saying all that, we have a triple top. Wow, triple top, you know, you don't want to mess around because that's it, that's it, you know. Or you have a triple bottom, which we could be having now. I've shown triple bottoms in stocks, and the stock vacillates around. People say, oh, my, this never goes up, and then it just takes off and goes. Triple bottoms are um, basically just like anything else. They're just triple bottoms. You know, they, they, there's no sellers after that, and there seems to be willing buyers at that level. That's why it's a triple bottom. Now, uh, the other qu a quick thing I want to mention is every single time the market hits the upper or the lower ranges, either the support is getting stronger or weaker. That's a tough tell, okay? 
generally speaking, if you keep on hitting on the surface of something, it gets weaker and then it breaks. So if you constantly keep on hitting the lower band, it's going to break. If you constantly keep on hitting the upper band, it's going to go higher. It's just the laws of nature. You know, take a hammer and start hitting your floor. You won't do anything in the first thing. Keep on hitting it 100 times, <laughs> your floor is going to start cracking. Right? So that's it. Now, these are all kinds of different patterns. You want to go through it. You know, they're simply continuation patterns of these things that I that I talked about. And uh, I, I was just randomly looking on Google to look for some things. They're the same patterns, except they are, um, they are um, the continuation of, of um, each of these that I showed. Good. So let me move this out. I'm going to stop for a quick second. Uh, any of you have a quick question on the on the technical? I mean, on the te technical pattern that I just covered for the last twenty minutes. <clears throat> no, I'm good. Oh, okay, that's good. All right, Corey, Jules, you can still hear us. Yeah. Yes. Good. I. I can see a long time ago, if I would have paid attention to some of that stuff you said, I, I can clearly see where, you know, how you always talked about these patterns and they sort of repeat. They repeat. Patterns repeat for a simple reason. Human beings never really truly change their behavior. The programs that are run by the, by the algos and stuff, after all, are programmed by human beings. So manifestation of charts is simply hum, human behavior in, in motion. That's it. You know, there's, there's nothing to it. Some of them are very complex because these machines make it complex. So, you know, Jules, uh, you are, you can right, still, can you hear me? yeah, I can hear you. Who's that? That's Jules. Oh, you go lady. How are you? Okay, good, good. good. Your mic is fixed. Good. So far, everything that I went through, you heard, uh, you could see yes. the screens, correct? Very well, ma'am. Thank yes. you. I'm so happy you're here. Okay. So saying all that, um, let's, uh, let's take a look uh, at some, uh, um, the broader picture, right? So. We don't get really, really scared if we open down screen 300 tomorrow or something, you know. Terrible things in New York. Um, we're concerned about our son. He actually gets off at the same subway station um, every morning, you know, um, at uh, 6th and 23rd, and then walks over to his uh, to his university. Uh, so it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's worrisome time. But then, you know, we've lived through all this stuff. So just say a prayer, and everyone's going to be safe. Um, so saying all that, uh, let's take a look at um, uh, the market. Uh, this was the January, February uh, lows in the 1800 levels when it looked like the, it was the onset of the bear market. And uh, lo and behold, uh, it wasn't. Double bottom. I'd like to remind everyone, anytime you see these big macro multi-month double bottoms, uh, this started in January, the collapse, and then the move up, and then uh, uh, creating a massive, massive, Large. Now remember, in hindsight, everything's 2020. It's lovely that we sit here on a Saturday afternoon discussing this stuff because we have the luxury of looking back. But when you're in the middle of that heated battle, it doesn't look that pretty, right? So the point is, uh, that's where I come in to help as much as possible, trying to put some rationality in this. Um, sorry, uh, uh, rationality uh, in the game. So let's. History teaches us. History doesn't always repeat itself. Believe me, in the markets it doesn't. And um, and uh, um, so you know we just have to. So when you in in um, in hindsight, like look at that massive uh, W formation, double bottom. Um, but once you see a double bottom pattern like this, uh, start getting aggressive in the market. A lot of people don't get aggressive till we break out of this. Um, breakout levels, right? Which is fine. But by then uh, they have uh, given. They're basically. Um, uh, uh, they're basically given, uh, sat there and seen some significant gains from this level. Now, somebody says, well, how do I know it's going to break out? Well, my answer is we don't, but we can make a good probability bet, as I've always done, um, as, uh, even off these levels, uh, as to what might happen. Look at the, you know, you, 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 you look at these, uh, um, there's a bunch of things happening. The simplest way of looking at it, look at the stoves. The stoves are deeply oversold. Uh, it's uh, we hit the same level, 1800 level. But if you look at the stochastics, they had a positive divergence. Somebody says, "What's a positive divergence?" Positive divergence simply means that for the same price level, which was around 1800, we had a higher, we had a higher, we a low on the stoves. That's a positive divergence. So plain and simple. What does it mean in real life? It means that the price pressure might be there as panic sellers sell, thinking that, okay, now we're going to hit this bottom. Now we're going to keep on going down. But the 
the the actual uh, so-called big money um, is not bailing as hard. And that is a positive divergence. Simple as that. You can look at it from a money flow standpoint also, but I'll show that on the other chart. So saying all that, when you see a bad move like that, and um, the biggest money, as I've always said, is made in the first 24 to 48 hours, if not the first 24 to 72 hours. If you look to see what happened here in the first 24 to 72 hours, markets went up close to 600 points. Okay? And we see this quite often. We saw that in Brexit, which I'll cover next. Very important because it relates to what's happening now. Saying all that, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, traditional technical analysts will say, "Hey, if this once this neckline breaks, because this is a uh, this is basically a uh, um, uh, what do you call um, double bottom, uh, uh, double bottom, and I need the neckline to break." Well, that's fine. Once it breaks the neckline, it just happens to happen very fast and furious, very seldom, regardless of what people tell you. They catch this candle. This candle starts developing generally in the middle of the night, early in the morning, unless it's a futures trader. Even futures traders don't know whether this candle is going to develop or not. This candle didn't develop here and just start going up. It zigzagged around, and then by the end of the day, that's what it created. Saying all that, it's better, in my opinion, to take a little bit of, like I say, the pain of sacrifice is far better than the pain of regret. I never recommend people to just load up and put everything in there. It doesn't matter how convinced I am. You know, I personally uh, never um, put in more than, even in the most bullish circumstances, more than 60% of trading capital in the market because there's always opportunities out there and I don't have an oil well pumping cash into my account every morning. So the point is that um, uh, it's always good, regardless of the size of the account, to have some cash on the side. Whichever the case, the most optimal scenario is when you get this type of uh, this type of volatility, you're seeing the stoves starting, it's still positive. Um, all kinds of other things that I keep on posting, and this is when you get the real bang for your buck. Little little sacrifice, little pain because you buy and you're in red, and then it shoot the fish in the barrel moment that I keep on mentioning about. It's just like, just sell at will. Like, let me give me give me a price because everyone's chasing at that point. Just give me a price and I'll just sell. And they and and it just keeps on going. Plain and simple. This happens all the time. So this is this uh, this uh, uh, after this we had this massive breakout and look where we went, and we had consolidations along the way. These are these consolidation channels, and every time there's a red candle after a big move, everyone freaks out, um, and uh, and says, okay, this is the this this is it. It's going to come down. Um, there are many different ways to measure whether or not this is the real thing or not, and one way to do it, simplest way to do it, is that if the stoves remain overbought over 80 that means um that means uh, you 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 have some some real strong money flow in the market going in there because overbought conditions remember can stay overbought and oversold conditions can stay oversold sometimes for weeks in a row in this particular type of market days in a row so just because something's overbought doesn't mean it's going to reset but even these type of resets it didn't even come below the 75 there was major strength Another big consolidation. This was a couple of hundred points. Okay, you got that reset. Resets don't always have to go down below zero. I mean, below 25 or 20. And as I told you before, the stochastics are nothing but a second derivative of the RSI. There are RSI traders who just trade off the RSI. Buy below 20. I'm sorry, buy below 30, sell above 80. Right? You know that. But it's not that easy anymore. But it works. Saying all that, we got a big consolidation here. Everyone thinks it's the end of this move. Then you get a double bottom, which is nothing but a replication of what happened here. Do you all see that? It's simply big, big dragon bullish. This is dragon bullish papa. This is dragon bullish mom, a uh, 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 junior, right? See that? Right there, takes off. Then things start to get really hairy. Right, Brexit and all that stuff. We played this move on Bre uh, This is pre-Brexit. We played it very well. This was the afternoon my son was graduating from high school. I still remember, and uh, I did mention very clearly. It's all in print. That takedown and large profits. I have a little bit of the th of 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 uh, uh, hedges. Somebody might say, "Well, uh, Frank, why don't you go out there and tell everyone to short the crap out of the market?" How the heck am I supposed to know? <laughs> you know, what if this? Is I told you that if the market bumped up, I did say that at that point you sell right away. 
So there's no way of telling. I mean, I would have, why wouldn't I have shorted the market in a huge way? I had small puts which just exploded higher. Could have made a million bucks that day. I'm serious. Or a couple hundred thousand bucks by putting in a couple of thousand dollars because of this 950 point drop within two days. So the point is, why didn't, you know, because at this point, at this point, it looked like there was going to be a slightly higher move and there was no way of telling. Whichever the case, you created another pattern. This is a very sharp, completely machine driven inverse head and shoulder. You got the big head. Thump. Look at the size of this bullish candle. It took out the second candle like see you later. That was Monday. This was Friday. And you created. And I kept on showing this a right left shoulder and a right shoulder. This was technical analysis at its best. Okay, now somebody says, oh, I knew it was going to turn up from here. Bullshit. Excuse my French. No, they didn't. Because at this point, it looked like the market was going to go down another 100 points. Even I said, showed that probability. You listen to my video cast from that time. And it didn't. It had this intraday reversal. I see these candles forming. I was short a bit. Because I bought a few more shorts as this can next candle was developing. Because I did expect this breakout level. Remember, markets always test breakout levels. This was a significant breakout level. A significant one off this 1940, 1960 range right there. Okay. And it looked completely logical that it was going to come and test that breakout level before it jumped. When I saw those puts turn and losing value fast, I went long immediately. You do not. And you wonder, well, why is the market turning at that? Well, I told you the reason hundred, you know, several times. It's because the big boys, the George Soros's of the world, the Stan Druckenmillers, the Carl Icons, the guys who were short to them, this drop in the Brexit was a lottery ticket. It was a real lottery ticket. They'll never tell you that. So they said, that's it. I'm taking my winnings and I'm going long right now. Saying all that, this would have been would be the perfect situation for it to come down to what 1940, 1960 and bounce off and test this breakout level. I'm going to put the breakout level as BL. Didn't. Just turn, moved and moved. Now, let's now dive into what's going on here because what, everything that I just mentioned and explained over the last, you know, over the past two major inflection points in the market back in January, February uh, and, and now is in motion. So what happened here? Not not going to get into the long-winded uh, economic explanation stuff because I've already explained that. I know we we have a lot of bond fears. Uh, our, our rates are going to rise like rapidly. You got a lot of big shots basically saying it's the end of the world, um, and um, all kinds of stuff. So. Look what the market actually did to the point. What is this? What is this line here? This, let me see here, last May, July, got to go back to May. Let's actually look at more recent stuff, but give or take a few points is pretty much correct. This line here is what? Somebody tell me. And I've shown this on my chart a lot. What does it look like? Yeah, well, it's acting as support right now, but what was it before support? It was the, remember, I've shown this on my chart a lot. In big letters, I wrote it. Multi-year. It's a multi-year. Pivot? Pivot? No, no. Corey, you need, to, you need to focus more. You need to really focus more, honestly. The reason I say that, and you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to help you here. You gotta focus on my charts more because I'm not quite understanding what you guys are not looking at. I have said it several times and I've written it in several times that that's the multi-year breakout line. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And you gotta focus on that because that's gonna make you, you know, that's that's gonna help you understand what the heck is going on here. I've said it several several times. This is a multi-year uh, th uh th The pivots, of whatever you guys are saying, is correct but in a different context. Jules said correctly, it's a support. It's acting as support. That was my, going to be my second sentence. Corey said it's pivot. Yes, it's a pivot, 
based on shorter term charts as to what's going on. But the reality is that this is a multi-year breakout line. What did I just explain in the last half an hour to 45 minutes? I just explained that markets love to test breakouts. I mean, a, a multi-year breakouts. Correct? I just showed that. Just here. Okay. Just uh, the markets always like to test multi-year breakouts. Just the way it did here. It almost did here. Almost did here. Like I just explained. So the market is basically doing the same thing now. All right. The, oops, sorry. One second. Sorry about that. The market is doing exactly the same thing now. It's testing to see that this level here at around the 2120 S&P is this, which was the, 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 the just, just, keep, just keep things under more, more in the focus as in what happened recently because that stays more in human memory, right? So here was the big Brexit breakout. The date was, uh, 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 the date was around, um, actually broke out here. Uh, the date was the 8th of July, all right? So 8th of July, so you had that. Hey, Shani. Um, so the 8th of July was the day the market broke out. Well, guess what the R markets did? It came back and found major support at around that level after slipping to 2105, which is this red dotted line right here on the 12th of September. Okay? So markets are doing what it's supposed to do, which is testing to see if this floor here, give or take, you know, 50 points or so on the Dow, 50 or 100 points, is, is this going to be the short-term floor? Here's the answer. We don't know yet. All right? So let's move on. It's testing this multi-year breakout line, and um, and I have shown that a bunch of times, so focus next time on that, but these are bigger pictures. So now what's happening? That is the most important thing here. I talked about something on my on on uh, the video cast as well. Wrote on the charts known as follow through day. You guys remember that a little bit? Let me just wipe my glasses a little bit. Hold on. You guys remember like the word follow through day? If you yeah. don't remember, yeah, remember, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm here to explain. I mean, I'm not here to. You know, I'm here to help, not to like quiz you guys to like you're dead. But I'm just saying you need to sort of keep these. All of a sudden, the, all these things will make sense believe me so the follow through day is generally known as the fourth day after a big fat ugly drop as to what whether or not the market can move okay so let's uh, after the market has a dead cat bounce this was a dead cat bounce all right this one remember the big 400 point drop everyone's like oh my god this is it perfect day to buy now why did i think it was a perfect day to buy i didn't go like nuts but i had a decent amount it's because it was testing these testing this ex extended multi-year breakout line, give or take, okay? It's very visible here. Everyone's with me on that, right? Right there? Yes. Right there, exactly. I'm putting it there, there. It was testing that, that Friday. It also, I kept on showing these McClellan oscillator. I can't even tell you how frigging important those things are. You see minus six, 700 on the one hour charts. It especially shows out very well on the Tinkerswim platform. You're like, you gotta buy. It's scary because it can slip to minus 800. Seldom happens, mind you. Seldom happens. Okay. I don't recall what it was on that uh, on on the fateful day in a 9/11. I was there on 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 uh, uh, the whole bunch of other analysts and traders. I wasn't a trader myself. I was on the wealth management side. I don't remember what the histogram was. I can tell you it probably wasn't more than minus 800. Okay. So even in the most devastating of situations, when you see McClellan oscillators go down that low, you got to start to say, okay, hold on. There is going to be a dead cat bounce, a retracement bounce, whatever the case may be. That was one of the factors that I took into account. So when I show those um, McClellan oscillators with big arrows saying, you know, oh my God, you know, and show it like it's, it, it actually went down below Brexit. Okay. You can, you can. Uh, scroll down and look at that day and, 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 and look at the charts, okay? It actually went down below Brexit. I said, man, this, this is definitely getting cheap on certain fronts. So um, saying all that, um, this was your big drop. Tested the line Monday. Whenever you have a sharp Friday down and it closes at the low, don't think it's just going to gap open on Monday. You need a follow through below that level. That is exactly what happened, okay? Follow through below that level. 
And don't forget, I did say somewhere around here, as I realized this was going to be like one of those straight down type of things to buy the 2130 puts. And boy, they went from $7 to $17. All right. You bought one. They were expensive, but you know, bought one, whatever it was. I think it was, uh, I think it was more than seven dollars. No, there was eight dollars and change. So buy a couple or buy one. It's payday. So you cover here. You start to see the candles forming. That's when I use Think or Swim and my Quad Algo HFT charts as just you know, that's my gun turret. That's what I'm looking through to act to inform all of you and looking for real candle reversals because a lot of candles reverse but nice green and then they give back remember this is a daily so you're not seeing the intraday stuff that drives us mad right so obviously it's a daily so you got this big move up you just couldn't buy anything it was just like running 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 that was a pretty fat move it was uh well past um it was well past the uh, the the 50 percent level Right, it was well past. It just visually, you can see it. You know, from a Fibonacci retracement standpoint, that was in one single day. It had almost gone up sixty. It had captured back maybe, uh, I would say, yeah, almost sixty percent of this um, large, large drop. Quite a bit. Everyone gets excited. Not really. Right there, I did show that the stochastics on both fronts, especially on the algo charts, were overbought. So not a time to really lump in when they're overbought. Yeah, you can leave a little few runners out there, but it's not a time to really lump in. You can't short either really hard because on a move like this, on a move like this, it's they, a lot of shorts are very panicky at that point. Okay? And they are, they're, they're scared like, okay, next morning, they got they got to cover. Look, I've been short before and blown out, and it hasn't felt good. Okay? On positions. So the thing is, especially on the SPX, it's not a good feeling. When you see the futures opening up 10, 20, 30, you just don't stop. And you're like praying, like, okay, is it going to go down? Well, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, try to use my head as much as possible to bail out, move the other way, all that stuff. Saying all that, the next day was a disaster for the average trader. All it did was create and reset. Reset. This was the time that it got you know, this was the day that it got overbought, and then it reset. And the reset took two days. Heavy volatility, we know that, come on. So the, here's the follow through day, all right? So follow through day is the fourth day after the first green candle. The fourth day after the first green candle, all right? First green candle, fourth day. And I did mention this, that let's see if this is the follow through day. One two i'm sorry uh the, the the fourth day after after the drop one two three four question is is it going to follow through if this candle was red uh then we wouldn't have had a follow through day because it wouldn't have counted as the fourth day does everyone understand that it's not a can, can you see Okay, Can you I'll, say that again? I'll say that again. The follow-through day is generally, and I'll correct myself, third or fourth day after a big fat reversal, green candle reversal on the market after a crash. This was a full-scale crash. Okay? So the follow-through day is you count three or four days from the day that you had that green candle to see whether there's going to be a follow-through on the market. For an exact definition, I will post it. Okay, it is uh, used by the O'Neill guys, you know, Investors Business Daily. There's a big, you know, big followers of that stuff out there. And uh, so the follow through day is extremely critical. We did get a follow through day on Thursday. All right. And then on Friday, this happened. Now, just visually, sometimes you just have to look at things the way you're looking at it without analysis or anything. When you look at those candles, if you focus on these candles here from the time that we had the humongous drop, does it look bullish or bearish? I don't want analysis, so I just want a yes or uh, uh, so. Corey, does it look bullish or bearish? Bearish. Okay, Tim said yeah, bearish. I'd say, I'd say bearish. Okay, Jules. I'd say bullish. Okay, uh, Shawnee. Bearish. Okay, so we have one bull and four bears. 
I'm putting money in the long side. That's it. So from a sentiment standpoint, what this market has done is completely created a huge amount of emotional bears. And you guys might be right. I'm not bullish, but I'll explain to you why this looks more bullish than bearish, at least for the time being. All right. And I'll show the other charts to mention that. So it is neither, you know, it, there's no way of telling right away. Here's the bearish viewpoint. You got Friday's action was solid. Look at that little candle. It wasn't a bearish engulfing. In other words, it wasn't long enough to engulf this green one. And it created a minor reversal hammer. You see that, right? You know, it's like this, and then the head is on top. It closed more on the on the on the top end of the scale. So that's one. It was it was basically an inconsequential event despite the massive volatility in the market. This small candle. The second thing is, if you look at the internals, then these are dailies, okay? You are you are starting to see a formation where it looks like the daily stochastics want to rise. That's the bullish picture. Uh, and and secondly, when you look at the trading band between the lower Bollinger and the upper Bollinger, one second, here's your here's your upper Bollinger, here's your lower Bollinger, you can clearly see that we are well to you know far away from the upper Bollinger than we are to the lower Bollinger. The candle dynamics is um is basically if you add if you add these two green candles and add all these three red candles, believe it or not, they're almost equal in size. If you add these two, they're almost equal in size from this drop. All right? Now, saying all that, we are, my, uh, my uh, uh, charts that I put at the end of the day, and we're gonna go into that right now. So this is the daily view. The bearish view is, Obviously, after that big drop, you're going to get this, get this move here. But there is another thing happening here, which is known as a descending triangle. Okay? We talked about that on the first part of this session. Here's your descending triangle, ladies and gentlemen. There's a big, fat downtrend line. We got to break out of that if we want to be, you know, uh, if we want to like make, get some higher levels, not necessarily up here. I mean, that'd be too much, you know, 2200 off this big drop. Who knows? Um, believe me, I'm the clueless one. So this is a descending triangle. Everyone see that? Yes. Exactly. Yes. So that's very bearish from a macro standpoint. But if anyone's betting their big money thinking it's a descending triangle and you get a frigging breakout up here and this market goes and tests where I think it's going to test, which is somewhere around the 2151 to 2170 level, which simply brings us to the top of, this is like 2165 or so, which simply brings us to the top of the, of the first retracement candle, okay? which I think is probably going to be the best case scenario. And when that happens, and if somebody's really loaded up on the short side, they are toast. Unless they're really powerful technicians and everything, and they'll be like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll short more out here. This is what happens. Let me explain this to you. These algos are such artificial, so intelligent artificial uh, AI monsters. Okay, some of the, some of the black boxes, not algos are created same. Just the way not all humans are created same, right? So some of them are so specialized, they just hunt out within one hundred. I mean, whatever nanosecond, gigasecond, I don't even know. Okay, they sniff out where the where the fast money is putting their bets. They see fast money putting their bets on the short side. I don't care what you tell me, they will blast it higher just for a moment, maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe 10 minutes, just to take out those stops on the short side. You guys have seen it a lot, and believe me, they do it. I have friends who work uh, uh, in, 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 I call them the, 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 the black box guys, right? Who, are, who know nothing about how the stock market works. They are some of the finest quant guys writing programs for these for these machines algo machines okay we had a neighbor here i didn't live here at that time who was some russian guy he had sold the first algorithm how to trade the market without and remember algos don't care about the market they just look at pure momentum and all kinds of different position positioning within the market okay and uh, most of the algos um and uh, i'm sorry the, the the technical trend moving ones there are macro algos which look at 
stock market fundamentals and all that stuff. That's different. And this uh, this old guy uh, I heard was he, he was just a real wacko. He sold his first one to one of the bigger firms on the street. I think J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, probably Goldman Sachs, um, for at that time, I think 20 years ago, for like two million dollars or whatever. And believe me, the Russians are uh, the Russians and the Indians are the ones who actually created. Just so you know, algorithmic trading. I'm telling you, the Russians and the Indians created this. And they're smart dudes. And if you really talk to some of these guys, they'll explain to you what's the big deal. We got machines to run the market. We got to do it. Now, some of them go out of the way to do a lot of illegal, not illegal necessarily, but they're legal, but they're borderline illegal stuff, like spoofing. They'll just throw out two shares just to see if there are any buyers out there. They'll put out an order to buy 100,000, which they have no, re no inclination to buy, and then they'll pull it off within, within a split of a second just to suck in the buyers and then boom you see that all the time all right so saying all that the algos are hunter killers they look for where the uh, uh, majority of the positioning is based majority positioning by a lot of retail traders are based in their head they're thinking okay this is bad this is going to go down all i'm doing in a very small way and an important way is trying to show that if you study the technicals and make it second nature, you might be able to be a little bit more, ahead, you might be a little bit ahead of the algos, which many times I am, but at least you won't do stupid things just by looking at prices. When I keep on uh, yelling in my, and it's all in good, 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 good nature, not to offend anyone, that listen, don't just stare at prices, look at the other stuff too. Man, do you know how much it's gonna help you? You can't just look at prices. Prices will be moving up and down within the flick of a second. Google up three, down six, you know, for what? But if you, have, if you keep on looking at the internals, all the other, other stuff that I put out there, incorporate that with your own gut feeling, you'll be a far better trader, I can assure you, than you've ever been. But if you don't practice that discipline, you will not. And that I know from my own experience. All right, so that's it. So saying all that, this is a descending triangle. At the same time, you could easily have a 100 to 150 point move to move up towards this, and then the market basically does this. And I'll show it to you in the other chart. Then it creates what? Somebody tell me, what does it create? The channel. That's right. Cons uh, consolidation uh, channel. Consolidation, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. A sideways consolidation channel or a trading range. How about that? You're right, it's a channel. And it did that, and I'll show it to you on the Thinkorswim chart. I was doing two, uh, a, a, a private session with two other uh, members that you guys know about, and we looked at it, we're like, wow. So it's gonna drive everyone mad, it's just gonna keep on doing this. Except it won't do it in a straight line, maybe it'll come down here, move up here a little bit, but bottom line is, it's gonna do this for the next couple of weeks and drive people crazy. Not hey, you guys. Frank, did you see uh, the big resistance at 2152 there? Yeah, I'll show it in your other charts. Yeah, I've shown that on my other charts. Nothing new to me. You know, I'm in other charts. Yeah, exactly. You're right. 2151 and change. Absolutely. <coughs> I did see that. And um, and so it's going to call, call create a consolidation channel. Now. Frank, could, couldn't that yeah. also be an ascending wedge? I'm sorry. Uh, could, could, couldn't it also be, oh, this one? Yeah, off the, off the uh, blue line you drew from the bottom all yeah. the way up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, could could it, uh, it could it be this? One second. Could do you mean it could? Uh, I I think I know what it's what you just said. You think it could be like this? Yes. Like, in other words, keep uptrend line, right? Like yes. stay within the uptrend line. You know. I think it more happen like that. I listen and let's face fact. Huh? It, it, I'm sorry, Tim. What'd you say? I think that's more likely, more likely. will happen. Yeah. I mean, look. I'd like to believe that that's likely. But as a coach, as somebody who's working with you guys, working on myself and sharing this, I really don't know. I'm serious. I would like to believe it does that because if it does that, then the market's just going to go boom like that at one point. Okay? But is it not possible that it actually does that but intraday slips and slides? That's possible too, right? So, right. so, so the point is, yeah, you guys are absolutely correct. This uptrend line, if it's held like this, it's going to be very positive okay in other words the bears the 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 tactical bears are going to say oh boy this uptrend line and that's when we have to watch this because if we get up here 
if we basically this is a mid bollinger somewhere around the 2165 level or so so if and um if we get up here on the stochastics and stay again listen carefully you can do this on your screen too always have the stochastic if it stays above the 80 line or 70 line in some of the rsi stuff that's going that's going to be this everyone follow me on that that is going to be this this thing that that Tim just mentioned and Jules had mentioned. And if it stays above this line, that means market has internal strength. And at one point, the market's just going to burst loose and try to try to attack the previous highs. That's the bull scenario. The bear scenario is that this is a descending triangle and the next move down will basically break it, get down to what's the 2100 level real fast and test the previous lows from Monday, past Monday, seems such a long time ago, past Monday, right here. This green dotted line was the lows, give or take, the lows for last Monday. Now, let's move on to the same charts, but in a different format. That's the bull scenario, that's the bear scenario. And if we break 2100, please, at that point, we do have a mini trend change in the market. No question about it. At that point, we are more liable to test uh, 90, I'm sorry, 1980 and 2000 real fast. So let me show you what's going on. Let me get this lovely crayon Do out of the picture. That the 2100 level, it, it's, uh, the more we support that level, I will come in and buy. Oh yeah, the, the 2100 level, you're absolutely correct, Tim, is a very, very strong, um, very strong support level, both psychologically, and uh, and uh, from a standpoint of uh, of uh, uh, and standpoint of what you call technically, absolutely correct on that. No, I I I yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I don't try that. at the uh, 100 moving average too. Yes. Very so strong. so let me. Well, uh, you're absolutely correct, sir. So let me just uh, uh, draw this um, like this for a quick second, and let's go over this chart, um, which is which is important to keep in mind. Here we see more positivity based on what we saw on um, on uh, the thing uh, on the on the last one on the investing.com chart. Here, because you know, and again, visuals are very important, right? So visually, okay, here was the big breakout right there, right there, okay, and that was back on, um, like I said, right after July 4th, there's a break breakout. So all we basically did, I repeat again, is we came close to testing that breakout level. We didn't get there. We didn't get there on a closing basis. We got there on a pre-market basis, by the way. Everyone understand that part? That retest can also happen pre-market and not show up intraday. Does every, is everyone clear on that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. Fine. Because that's something that we all, we all tend to forget. We always say, oh, well, it didn't close here. Well, the intraday closing basis in the days that we didn't have machines running heavy duty programs free market and S&P futures basically trading up and down like beyond monkey on a hot tin roof, you know, they're just basically controlling the market like it did during Brexit um, is, uh, is, is uh, you have to take that into account. So saying all that, um, this is, if this works out like this did here somewhat, then we are going to see, um, then we're going to basically see these levels. First of all, the first level that it needs to break out of uh, is 2151, right there. The one that Tim mentioned, shown in my other charts, there. Now, what, you, what I look for in my clueless way, okay, I've always done, is look for la uh, previous inflection points. Look at this inflection point right here. And this is so important because we trade these stocks which move in down with S&P like, bringing their tied to the umbilical cord, right? So it's like, you get, we have to know these levels, you know. So this one, <coughs> excuse me. So this one was the last time, the, uh, I mean, it was the major inflection point. Looked like the market was going to roll over. Bang, it turned from here. So let's look at it here. We're pretty much there. So we need to take this level out. And that level is, uh, that level is right there, 2148. Roughly 8, 21, yeah, 2148, nine S&P points from where we are. However, before it does that, it could very well, like you guys correctly pointed out, do this. Okay, do this. And then just keep, you know, 
or it can just basically stay within this symmetrical triangle and, and keep on doing that and then decide whether it wants to break out or what break down in the following week or so. We don't know yet. So what do we rely on? We rely on a bit of, well, we, we can see the moving averages. Everyone can see that. We can see that the Bollinger Bands, these are dotted lines, and the green acceleration band, that these are all, all pretty good. You know, it's holding, holding above that, nice bounce, all that stuff. Generally speaking, you get a, you, when you break this, you know, the standard deviation on this, uh, uh, Tim, is what? Roughly like minus two or something? Minus two, minus yeah. three here? Okay, so let's call it minus two or minus three. In other words, how far you've moved away from the moving averages. So if that's the case, generally there's a mean reversion play in the market. Simply means you're trying to get back to the mean. In this case, the mean averages on the third, uh, 34 and the uh, 50 and the 34 is somewhere around 2170 which also happens to be where these downtrend line is coming into play so saying all that you got to watch that level if we get here there will be some heavy duty selling because it will uh, it, because the 34 and the 50 day moving average and this happens to stocks too act as a magnet so if this acting as a magnet we got some nice jump change to make from where we closed at 2139 to 2170 or let's say even the 50 day moving average at 2167 you got 30 points almost 30 points in the S&P I'll take it any day will it happen in one quick go I don't think so I think they're going to make it very difficult but I think we get there we might get there in 10 minutes after the Fed decision because what if the, you know they don't raise rates given all this different stuff if they oh, okay no rate hikes within 10 minutes the market gets there and fails that is very, very critical. Do not expect for easy markets. Please don't, okay? Because we could very well pump up here real fast within 10 minutes. We've seen that before, Fed days, and I've played enough of them to know it, okay? And Fed day is Wednesday. Lo and behold, it's Wednesday, whoa, okay? So, so if we run up here before Wednesday, which I doubt, maybe it will, you gotta be a seller. Or you need to, you know, do some sort of strategy, do a straddle, do this, you know, do some sort of protective move and, or just stay away. Whatever the case, there's a couple of things happening here which I need to cover quickly, all right? First of all, first of all, um, where the direction the market is. <clears throat> Let's look at the surface and then I'll look underneath the surface. For the first time in a while, for the first time in a while since Brexit, okay? I'm starting to see the moving averages starting to curl down. That's a negative sign. Okay, that's a negative sign. This will not manifest itself in one day. But over the following weeks, if this 34 moving average crosses below the 50, or the curvature of these lines are starting to look like this, you are in a short-term bear market. Not for years, maybe for months, maybe for weeks. The, given the speed of the market, I would say weeks. Despite this massive dropout on Brexit, moving averages didn't even do anything. Does everyone see that? They didn't yes. even buckle. I said this on that day. I noticed it. I was shocked. I expected the moving averages to completely collapse. They didn't even move. Just showed that the first drop on the futures market on, uh, on, on, uh, uh, which, uh, after Brexit was purely done by futures traders, not by big institutional fund managers. In okay. fact, I don't think you would see it right away, at least three or five days, because they take the moving average, the 34-day moving you average. You are absolutely correct. You will see it. That's what I said. This is something that will evolve over days, if not weeks. Absolutely correct. What I'm saying is that if this had continued, then we would have seen this starting to go down. But you're absolutely correct. But what happened in three or five days is just the opposite, correct? Right. Exactly. You're right. It takes a bunch of days from, you know, obviously these are moving averages to show that. So saying all that, this has to be monitored. If we stay yes. within a range, if we stay within a range and the lines are cr starting to cross down, you are going into a weaker market from the long side. Okay. We yes. don't know yet, but we are, we're pretty certain that uh, that's going to happen. And at that point, it's not going to be like a slow drip down. They'll either wake up one morning, futures down 30. And then people are scrambling, oh, everything's oversold, overbought. You got to sit back at that point because those will be big thumps. Like this thump that we saw, what saved this big move down was this. 
All right. That negated yeah. the pressure. Otherwise, believe me, we wouldn't be sitting here. We'd be sitting down here. Yes, exactly. So saying all that, <clears throat> let's take a quick look at some basic internals. Short term daily, we are uh, at least for now, how, how, uh, the way it closed on Friday. This is nice. This is good. I'll take yeah. that any day. All right. I like double bottoms. I like double bottoms and things uh, on uh, one second. I like double bottoms on stoves. I like double bottoms and stocks. And if I'm on the short side, I'd love to see a triple, you know, double or triple top. That's a different story. So saying all that, that's number one. I don't want to delve into it too much, but that's looking good so far at face value. So that means that we have a shot to retest the 50 and uh, uh, the 34 and the 50. Once we get there, let's reevaluate our, our, our options as to what, what we need to do. I have a few S&P calls running into Monday, and despite even if we fall and stuff, as long as the uh, technicals cooperate, uh, I am going to be, uh, I'm, I'm going to stay long on those. Let's look at the vortex indicator telling us nothing. The vortex indicator is a trend indicator. On the daily, both the negative vortex and the positive vortex are rising. Somebody's a bull say, oh, wow, look at the positive vortex rise despite this volatility. A bear will say, yeah, so what? You know, the negative vortex is rising too. So you can't really make an argument on that. Uh, you, you know, it's kind of uh, mixed. That, let's, look at, uh, let's look at the MACD, which a lot of people look at, okay? And one second. The couple of things to look at here, okay? First of all, you have, this is, uh, remember, this is, uh, um, I'm going to get the pointer. Brexit. MACD got down here real fast, real fast. We're almost there. One similarity. Second similarity, okay? RSI. RSI plummeted to, this is this, is this line. This RSI line plummeted, relative strength plummeted during Brexit to roughly uh, whatever it shows here, like 24, whatever. The RSI plum plummeted exactly to that point right here. Bounced, it's at here right now. So the RSI is actually starting to climb, climb, uh, despite the, uh, you know, in those last two days that we had a reversal. Two similarities, okay? RSI is turning exactly from the same point. And the MACDs are pretty damn, these histogram numbers, I mean, uh, the, the candles are pretty damn um, oversold from whichever front you look at it. Third thing, which is very important, look at the blue line plummeting. Okay, look at this blue line plummeting. That blue line is the on balance volume. There has been some big liquidations. Where is the liquidations coming from? Couple of hedge funds that you guys will never hear about blew up. Who are the, where are they mostly based in? I mean, what asset class you think they're based in that caused such a big margin sellout or a flush out of of, of those of those of those smaller funds? What sector you think? Which got hurt? Bond the market. Market. That's right, sir. Bond right. Market. Big fixed income market. Exactly. They won't make it in front page news, but they're there. Because you don't get a plummet in the on balance volume that hard, that fast, okay? Um, um, very, you know, and, and it started off around here. Uh, I'm sure a good portion of that, and I know for a fact a good portion of that is coming from there. Saying all that, this hasn't turned yet, non balance volume, okay? Here it turned abruptly because short covering happened immediately. So this is still somewhat of a negative picture this blue line because the on balance volume, which basically the simplest way of looking at it is your net volume, you know, buyers minus sellers. So if it's plus, it's a good thing. If this starts to turn over the next following days, then you are going to see the markets, in my opinion, try to get back above and try to retest the highs again. If you start to see this blue line start to turn, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Whichever the way you slice it or dice it, we are pretty deep oversold, no question about it, and we are oh, we have we have a mixed picture on certain fronts. Now, on balance volume can turn on a dime. Somebody said, somebody goes, why? It's why because of the frigging machines. I mean, you all of a sudden they'll flood and 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 move fast and furious on uh, on 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 the buy side, and uh, and and put in some heavy duty short covering motions in play. So. That is not something that takes weeks. It takes hours to turn, and you'll see that on that side. Now, let's look at the same thing on our good old 
ES, okay? Here's your big fat line. We didn't get there yet to test the downtrend. I mean, the, to, to really retest this uptrend line, that comes into play on the, on the E-minis at 2090, okay? Let's focus on Brexit and now, because that's the last reference point I have. Overall, looks pretty good, okay? We have had E-mini open interest seems to be climbing. You can see that. You can put that on your thing right there, okay? Open interest seems plunged here, and now it's starting to climb. It's a good sign. I'll take that, but it, I, I don't really read into it too much. Here, mixed picture, but still good. Is it possible that we can dip a little bit lower and then come up? But remember, you cannot go lower. You cannot go. Brexit, the lowest point that we reached was, and the lowest point that we reached, which was screaming by ops, okay, opportunities, was down here around zero. We reached there on Friday. So that's, that's pretty big. Now, this can zigzag back and forth, you know, create big hot volatility in the market. Not big, moderate volatility, because nowadays everyone's so much on the edge. Like even a 50-point move down is like, whoa, 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 hold on, what's going on? Because well, that 50-point move down is not just a 50-point move down on the Dow. It takes down trading stocks, the fast-moving momentum stock, down three, four, five bucks, yes? So all of a sudden, everyone's like, you know, oh, what's going on? There's no way to harness volatility. The only way to do it is to manage it. There's no method to the madness. Like, how do you control volatility? It just comes. Our gun, you know, one day down three, other day down four. Charts are intact. That's fine. So let it do what it does, you know. If a, five, if a, if a $20 stock falls three bucks, that's a major issue. Okay? That's a major issue. If a $100 stock three bucks, there's really, you don't need to freak out that much. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if a $400 stock um, or a price line, for example, drops 30 bucks, it's not the end of the world because it's a very minute percentage. So one of the other things that I, I do, and I'm sure many of you do too, is look at the percentage drop. You know, if, some, if price line drops 1%, right, that's $14. Price line drops 10%, that's $146. So if price line drops $7, it's down half a percent. Who cares? Yeah, we do care if we have options, but the point is it's not really a big deal. Does everyone understand that? Yes. Exactly. Yes. And 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 and, yes. and a lot of us don't really focus on that. That's why sometimes I highlight, okay, it's up two percent, it's down three percent. Come on, take it easy. Amazon was up um was uh what do you call Amazon for example, for Amazon to go up if Amazon is up, let's say something huge happens. Let's say they split their stock, right? Because that's the second, the third cheapest. I mean, price-wise, Google and Amazon are like trailing price line as in, as in numerical price, right? What if Amazon decides, oh, we're going to split our stock? And the stock rises 5% immediately. That's what's going to happen. That's almost 40 bucks. It's going to happen right away. But it's only, you know, that that's a big move. But if Amazon falls $5 or $6, it's not the end of the world. That's only from a price point that I'm talking about. Now, let's look at, so this is kind of mixed. We don't know yet, but it's still oversold. So we like that. This is not giving a full picture on what is going on here. It is oversold, so I like that. It's minus 126 on the McClellan oscillator. It went as low as minus 200. That is a buy signal, whether one likes it or not. OK, and that happened, believe it or not, on the third day. All right. So the next day it improved a little bit. But this once it gets down to these levels, 180, 190, 195, 200. My, my simple conclusion from my past experience, you got to buy the market. You got to buy the market because one with other it's going to start shrinking a bit. However, um, better to see. If we're, look, we're all keeping an eye on the short term as to what's going on here. On the short term, the McClellan oscillator moved quite nicely. It went from that uh, big, bad, ugly drop of minus 700 on the one hour. I showed that. Minus 700, you got to go long. It will not maybe work for you the next three, four hours, but within the next 24 to 48 hours, you will make money at minus 700 or minus 600 McClellan. That's a given. 
some people ask, man, what's a perfect, you know, like I, I have kid around, like what's a perfect moment? That's a perfect moment to buy. And that's the moment of maximum panic. <laughs> that's it. Minus 400 or minus 500 right here. That's also pretty damn good. I'll take that. Here, I don't know yet because we got overbought. We got overbought here, fast and furious. We went up to plus 500. This was the exact mathematical correlation. Look at this from here to here. So now, does this mean we got to come down here? I have no idea. I'm going to find out when the market opens. But if the market does want to go higher, then it'll normally cap itself at minus 100 or so. This zone here. See the red line? I didn't draw the red line. That's that's done by, by the system. It's between 100 and minus 100. In order for the market to create some sort of stabilization, the McClellan oscillators, and you can watch that on your screen, need to stay somewhere within this plus 100, minus 100 range. Minus 200, it's starting to get tricky. All right, so that's the, these are things you know. I mean, I watch and 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 uh, they uh, they work. Uh, looking at where we left off on Friday, not bad. We're getting overbought. Now remember, these are fast stochastics. The slow stochastics on my quad system, which is on a separate bunch of monitors right now, I can't access it here, is showed a really nice move up on the slow stochastics which is somewhere halfway up, which is good. Once the slow stochastics get overbought, I'm sorry, they always reset. No question about it. So when people get overtly excited about a stock move and I see the slow stochastics overbought and the fast stochastics overbought, I'm sorry, I sell or I'll go short, whatever I do. I cannot chase prices when those powerful uh, indicators have always proven right. So at the point of most emotional euphoria is the point where I would be a seller. But I don't do it from an emotional standpoint. I look at look at that. And that one right now is a crossover and it starts the crossover at a point of maximum pain. Just so you know that. It's always like that. Always like that. Now, I started putting the pivots. So when you guys, you know, train your eyes to look at them, the yellow is the pivot, right? Red is the support thing. What I like about Thinkorswim is um, they are dynamic pivots moving as the chart is moving. Same thing with these uh, the, the the quad system, the algo system, um, but this is more dynamic. So you got multiple pivots. You got a one pivot here, the yellow line, right there, right? So to to uh, 213084. We closed above that. That's a good sign. Somebody says, hey, I like this pattern symmetry. I would say, I like it too. Okay, so what would I like about a pattern symmetry? Here's the only problem. Okay, E-minis, as you know, will start trading in five hours, four and a half hours. Tim will be watching and doing things. You know, Tim does uh, futures trading. And uh, so the thing is that these patterns will be, will autom by the, by, in the first hour, like between seven o'clock maybe tonight. Um, these patterns could come and go. So this is a good pattern. Look. There. So if it reaches this on the, on the, on the, you know, I, uh, uh, right after 6 p.m. and this gets overbought and this gets overbought up here by the time we open Monday, Markets could, uh, I'm sorry, markets initially going to sell off. If this gets overbought in this zone, and remember, these are E-minis, right? These are futures. And 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 this one opens up at 250, First thing, if it opens, I'm selling those few SPX calls that I have right there off the bat. No reason to get excited. Because once it gets overbought, the machines will reset the stoves. They will, unless something really big happens. And they continue to move sideways and higher, like it did here. So this pattern is good. We're looking at around 2150, and that would bring us up here. Now, if we break over this gap here at 2170, which is roughly around 2176 on the S&P 500, then all hell breaks loose. We're going higher. We're going to hit 2190 real fast. That's only if this gap. Last Friday, not this Friday, past Friday's gap uh, uh, gets taken out. Then there's going to be a lot of 
panicked the real panic short squeeze all right so that's that that's a given i'm certain about that if we take out this uh, uh 2176 2175 on the s p 500 you're going to see our stocks just rip but in the meantime it's a mixed bag it's looking good and this is what i'm looking for so that gives us an idea now the last thing i'll cover because it's already uh 2 30 right now is uh this one of the things that i did on friday was one second here is uh put out bear with me so one of the things that i did um on friday was put out four sets of charts at the end of the day i wanted to put them out and i want to remind everyone that this is what you know this is the, this is the the types of platform that i'm using extensively the first one is your the first one is the is, is the spx end of the week closing view using freestockcharts.com which is warden okay so that's one right there nice and clean put a nice target here retest of this 2170 put some arrows here just so you see where the inflection points are support as Tim clearly identified it, you know, this line is the 100-day moving average acting as major support. There's a gap fill here, by the way. That gap fills between 2100 and 2107, but this is Warden, right? So we're clear on that. This is one, one pattern, the uh, chart uh, platform that I'm using to show you guys. The second one is the think or swim version. This is a shorter picture I'm showing you because this is more dynamic, okay? So this was, uh, this is a one-hour chart. I'm sorry, this is a four hour chart, which is closer to, and I'll, ex I'll answer your question, uh, Corey, on what you asked me before. This is the four hour chart, which is the closest thing to a daily, but for tactical traders. Daily charts in general, just so you know, in this day and age, in the market, guys, will not make you money intraday. Does everyone understand that? Kinda? Yes. yes, I understand. Yeah, because the daily charts will give you a broader picture like we covered. All right, where we think the market can go, why we're not going to completely panic if it comes down a little bit more, this and that. But the daily charts on an intraday basis, what are they going to give you? They won't show you the volatility moves, so you won't be able to make money. So saying all that, a chart is a chart. It depends on what one wants to look at. This is a four-hour chart. This is a combination of the one-hour and the daily. Okay, the four-hour chart simply means you break the day in half, right? So if you break the day in half, this is what you're looking at. It's constructive. This is constructive. you got a big downtrend line here, which I keep on drawing. We need to blast over it. We need to, there's a gap fill here at 2170 on the E-mini. So that's about 2175, 2176 on the S&P. And you got this uh, line here, which was the previous high the day after, the, the previous Monday after the big crash. So we got a couple of things here going. Nice volume, second half of the day. I'll take it. So I, I put an arrow to it, right? So this is your think or swim version. This is your algo version, which makes me more money than, than what I could expect if I was just trying to track other charting programs. And it's a fact. I'm just giving you my personal experience. These, every single one of these move very fast. This is what I saw at the end of the day. Now, when I look at the same chart on the hourly, now on my other screen, I actually saw these lines higher. Now why? Because they pick up after market trades, okay? So this line right here, just so you know, the slow stows that I keep on asking everyone to get friendly with is now up here, somewhere halfway. Yep, around 42. So once they get, once they get up here, you have an 80% probability of a market sell-off. Look, and I've shown this many times, that I'm showing it in the, in, in the sessions. Look at this. Look at this. Now, these are the slow stove. It's the same thing happens with the fast stochastics, but the fast stochastics are happening much quicker. Once you get to these levels, oops, sorry. Look what happens to the market. I don't care where prices are. I'm talking about the market once you get to these levels. So once you get to, if the slow stow before Wednesday 
or let's say Monday or Tuesday, get up towards this level here, I am going to either go more short biased or go neutral. Now, in order for this to go up here, can somebody tell me by looking at the chart, in order for the slow stochastics to, to, uh, um, to get overbought up here, where do you think um, these candles are going to land up? Sorry, break the support uh, uh, re resistance. It'll be going back to the pivot. Yeah. Going back to the pivot is one. And anyone else, Corey? I I, I would say above the pivot. Above the pivot. So I'm assuming uh, you both are correct. The pivot is so critical. Machines work off pivots. The month it crosses the pivot and it stays above the pivot, all of a sudden I always, always see big buy programs come in. However, the pivot is also a massive wall. Okay? It's like the Berlin Wall when you to stand there, okay? So this pivot failure, how many times have people started getting excited and then the pivot fails? Once the pivot breaks out, markets take off. But pivot failure has happened way too many times or close to it. So here, it happened here. So I watched this very carefully. I don't expect people who are, you know, uh, are not in front of the screens all the time to do that. That's my job. I'll keep on informing you guys. But once we cross over the pivot, we will and and stay above that. The lo the po more powerful the candle, the easier it is to break over the pivot. Okay. So we need a big fat extension expansion candle like that, like that, to break over this pivot and go and test 216. Why is 216 important? Because if you trace this red line back all the way, this was the past consolidation channel that we were stuck in for the month of August. Got it? So on Friday, we slice through that like butter. Not this Friday, past Friday, like see you later, back. So now that support level has become resistance. The big resistance is 216 on the spice. That's it. Shorter term resistances, there are a few. There's a gap here. There's all kinds of stuff going on. All right. So I'm used to looking at this stuff. So to me, it's just like clean, very clean. So that's, that's, that's the bottom line. Now, if you just look at the numbers without really looking at the internals, it's not going to really serve you the purpose because what looks like a breakout will basically be a false breakout and they'll slap you. They'll, they'll hit you right there. And if you, if you, if you're not quick or you don't have stops, they'll take your money away. So this pivot is critical, 214.59. That's the pivot right now. Let me look to see if it's changed over the weekend. Hold on. I'm looking at my other screen. Now, what I also have on top of that is um, this Fibonacci retracement. The rule of the thumb is, and I keep it real simple, the rule of the thumb is that um, that uh, markets, after a big drop, uh, tend to uh, get back 50% of, um, of the drop. A 50% Fib retracement happens a lot with stocks, happens with uh, uh, markets too. So 50% is what? 215.50, right there. It also happens to be, see this, uh, the blue line here? This was my previous uptrend line. It also happens to be exactly there. So somewhere in the zone, the market's going to find formidable resistance. It's also a gap. Look at that. It's also a gap. That's why I have these markers. I started putting these markers because I realized that um, that uh, uh, this might not be as clear on some screens if you're looking on a smaller screen. So I put these markers. So whenever I put these markers, those are points of interest. There should be a marker down here too. Um, so that's it, these markers. So just, that's why I put the markers. Uh, uh, clear? Now, where is the pivot right now on... Okay, the good news is that I'm looking at even the after Friday, you know, um, post Friday market close, the pivot is still at, still at 214.60. So it's still there. It hasn't, you know, they haven't adjusted it yet. So that's your quad. The, the fourth platform that I use, which is very easy on the eyes, very easy on the eyes and moves to, is investing.com. So when I'm stepping away from my desk and I, I use this investing.com. Um, I, I use this off my iPhone at times, uh, but I don't, you know, obviously on the iPhone, I don't draw the lines and stuff. Um, but um, this is it. So I put, you know, on this one, I put bubbles of hope and despair. So this is a, uh, this is a, a big possibility. That, watch.
it's a complex multiple head and shoulders maybe a double bottom like that like that like that two scenarios right here and this this uh, this is basically the futures okay so you're talking 2160 2156 is roughly 2160 on the S&P that's your point of big supply or right here we'll see so that's what we're going into next week now we have a whole bunch of stuff going on what I suggest and again my suggestions are just my suggestions you know people need to do what they need to do is don't go nutty on one side or another we are selective on certain stocks even on bad days we're kicking butt on a bunch of biotech stocks and stuff but as in as in um, um, market strength I don't know if the market's really strong or whether it's weak I just see patterns um, we'll find out I don't think this is my gut feeling okay that Yellen and company who have always been somewhat market friendly are going to raise rates on Wednesday if they do raise rates fill in the blank what's going to happen quick and drop exactly the market's going to drop 400 points we're going to hit 2100 we're going to slide below 2100 then what's going to happen Pop. then the market the will pop exactly the market will pop okay because they'll pop and that pop needs to be sold and so whichever the way that's the easiest scenario to, to envision first the market will drop then you're going to see those massive programs come in big fat candles that if you're not quick how many times have i tried to buy these 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 s&p and ruts and i'm late by maybe 30 seconds and they're up 30 percent up two dollars up three dollars i'm a fast trader i go in there and i buy them higher i don't care because they're moving don't hesitate if you try to if you try if you're buying the spx and play with one or two calls i'm serious you know unless you're a big trader buy buy 20 buy 30 i don't care those in that case get ready for your account to move down three four five thousand bucks every every second okay um but if you just want to make money and feel good just buy one or two or buy one and said okay if it pulls back i'm going to buy one more okay control your risk these are cheap right some of them are six bucks some of the seven bucks premiums on spx calls and puts are way high going into wednesday because they know it's going to be a big party up and down not up or down up and down okay so that's the premiums. That's why the premiums are so high. They're like nine bucks, ten bucks, eleven bucks, unless you buy way out of the money, in which case you really won't make money if it doesn't get there. So what you do is buy one, and 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 if it start, if the can, if I'm showing that, okay, here's a big fat reversal candle. Now you guys understand a lot more the internals, and you see that turning up. Jump in. Don't look for like, oh, I can save thirty cents on buying that thing because those that third thirty cents. Penny wise and pound foolish that you're trying to that you're trying to get in the middle, okay? Because the spreads wide, right? They keep spreads wide, bastards. If you ask me, they keep spreads. Sometimes if right before a big event, have you seen the spreads widen big time, right? It's yeah. like it's like four bucks and six. And you're like, what the hell is going on? I mean, I look at it, and I'm like, whoa! I don't care. I buy. I I try to put there in the middle, they, and they know exactly when we're coming in. The machines just move it up another fifty cents. It's incredible. They do it all the time, and we can't. We, there's nothing we can do. So, and you, you go ahead and buy that there because that generally, when a spread widens and the certain indicators are, are starting to show the reversal candle and all that, you're going to get a 30 to 40 percent move within the next 15 minutes. That's why they so do you, it. You mean yeah. you mean buying at this uh, the ask the higher end. I don't always buy at the ask, but you, if 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 there is a big move, event-driven move coming, I I'll have to pay closer to the ask. That's all yes. I'm saying. Exactly. Right. What I'm saying is that if we, uh, and this happened to me, so I'm sharing the, the you know, I'm a straight-up guy. I'm sharing you the truth. Is what happens is when I'm trying to like buy, it, trying to bargain too much with the algos, they're basically, excuse my French, saying "f you," I'm gone. And I'm like, why? Why the heck didn't I buy it at seven? And now I'm chasing it at nine. You get it? Yes. So what I'm saying, yes. the first one that you buy as a tester, bargain a little bit in the middle, right? But yes. don't bargain too much because the market's going to move against you so fast. You could have made two points on it. And let's say somebody's buying four. You could have made 800 bucks in like freaking three minutes. 
You know what I'm saying? So one of the ways yeah. people say, well, how do you know when to sell? Well, I don't know how to sell. And when to sell, I'm, I'm watching my charts. I put those levels prior to that trade. So people are, are, are looking at it. One of the ways you do it, put some sell limits out there. Let's say you say, yeah. I want to make two points on it. Now, this applies to everyone, okay? So listen carefully. So uh, one second. Somebody's asking uh, a question. Tim, yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you the link. It's great guys. Okay. You love them, okay? There's this. Uh, there's this Asian guy who's the tech. One of the tech guys is brilliant. Um, I'll I'll send you the link. Um, just so you know, one quick thing, Divya. Um, on the quad system, I've been using it for almost six years now, or more, more. And um, I pay a lot more because I have this whole platform, all kinds of stuff. They have a more tight version of this with all the same charting functions, and it's not just charting. It's a whole platform. You can put trades through it, but you can set up like my, uh, the way when I look at my code screen, I'm not using Thinkorswim. I'm using Quad. It's beautiful. You know, it lays it like a table. So it's very easy on my eyes. Okay. So, and then my charts come with it. They, um, so, uh, so they, uh, uh, they're here from Jersey City, uh, an exchange place right on the waterfront. So the guy has basically said, look, if, you, if, if, if people come from your side, I'll, I'll charge them as low as 120. They, well, he wanted 200. I said, no, charge them less. Let them try it. If they're happy, you got a customer. So they charge 120. Try it out. If you're happy and, it, and, and you can see what uh, makes money, I have a bunch of uh, training videos on the quad. And also next week, either next week or the week after, they are going to be holding a webinar specifically for us, for all us members. So you can basically do trials. Let's sit, sit on the webinar. The webinar is going to be an hour long directly from Quad, and they'll show you all the functions that they have in the platform. I won't lie to you. I only know 20% of the functions. Okay, There's a lot more stuff in there. It's very advanced, mainly used by hedge funds and, and Wall Street banks. Um, so I told them, I want a webinar because I, I've taught as much as I can to my, to my people, but I don't know. The, uh, the, 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 the rocket science that's in there. They said, no problem, we'll do with it. So stay tuned for that. So anyone who wants to try it out, call them up, they give you the trial link, try it, let's sit for the webinar. If you're happy and making money for you, then keep it, otherwise dump it, all right? So that's it, that's okay. the way it works. Now, saying all that, um, uh, what was I saying about, oh, uh, about the trade management part? Let me answer Corey's question. Corey, you still there? Yes. Okay. Corey's question before he starts is, how do I switch in between uh, on on uh, uh, on the on the uh, trade side between the hour, four hour, one hour? There is no rule of the thumb, Corey. If I'm looking for a fast trade, I am concentrating on the 15 minutes to uh, five to 15 minutes, right? So when I look at the same chart here, let me just show you. The faster the trade the shorter the time frame you're looking at. Like Jules sometimes says she's looking at the five minute because she's looking to see you know, if, 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 it's, if it's a more shorter term trade. The one hour gives you a nice overview so I don't get blown out of trades. Now, what does that mean? If, if these little candles, which I'm going to show you on the five minutes, they look really big on the five minutes, these red candles, right? So if I was relying completely on the five minute charts for my trading, Okay, what, and especially on fast moving stocks like Tesla and Google and Amazon and stuff like that, I'd be, I'd be literally be not just a monkey on the hot tin roof, I would literally be blown out because these candles would shake me out big time. The one hour keeps you in the game because it shows you, you're like moving back from the noise and looking at the pattern. That's the first answer to the question, Corey, all right? Now let's go back and look at the five minute of the same thing. And remember, the E-minis are the fastest moving beasts in the market, right? Not the SPX, not the SPIs, the E-minis. So this will give you a slight edge if you're following the futures market as to what will happen on the front end of the market. Does everyone understand that? Yes. yes. That's, the reason yes. Why, that's the reason why I look at futures. I used to trade futures before. I might be starting again. But if I start trading futures, I'll be sleeping through my job with you guys all day long, okay? Because I'll be I know. Done, that's not I'll, good. I'll, I'll be done by 10 minutes. I mean, really, the old days, I remember, I did that for a bunch of money. I was pretty good at it, too, because I use futures all the time for my projections. I was done by 10 o'clock. I just said, okay, gone. But I want to, I, you know, I want to be involved. I love you guys. You know, it's just, it just keeps me, you know, keeps me focused and and also keeps me in the market because futures traders just so you know they don't really know about the markets that much because they don't really care what happens as long as they made the money right so a lot of them just play in the middle of the night when then europe opens and, and japan opens and china opens 
and all this action, it's a different ball game. All right. So it's like the old, it's like you know when we're young in college, it's after hours parties, right? By the time you're done with the after hours party, you're missing the classes, right? So that's what happens. So um, so in a so this is your five minute, right, of the same picture. So here's your five minute of uh, Friday. See the difference, Corey? There's a lot of noise. Got it? See that? Uh. I think I think the thing what what I was referring to, which which you're giving good. This last week I learned how to on think or swim to split the screen. I put the left side, the features, yeah. the right side, SPX. I know. And, and 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 I stayed in the trade on the one hour, but I saw it following. And yeah. then later I I saw that I made good profit. But then you nice. said later I should have stayed in the full hour that kept me in the game, and and I would have done better. Yes. Um. When the market is very volatile, right? Uh, the the uh, you have to look at all time frames literally uh, when the market's very volatile here's the advantage you get on the five and fifteen minute okay the five and fifteen minute is critical for volatile markets why because as patterns are developing you get to see them quicker the first candle that starts to build okay this was Thursday Friday okay let's look at Friday these are very important stuff on our daily trading so here's your Friday. Uh, picture. So Friday is actually a drag, dragon bullish. It's a perfect, it's a, on the 15 minute, 15 minute. See that? 15 minute. It's a perfect W. Wow. Look at that. Now, is that the end of the story? No, it's a, it's a very tight bottleneck. Always use the Darvis box. Works like magic. Gives you an idea of the trading range at that time frame. If you're using a one hour Darvis, okay, just put that on your studies. Somebody doesn't know how to do it. I'll help them out. Um, and uh, you add them to your studies. It tells you what possibly the next move is. 15 minute is overbought. Darvis has a bottleneck. Overbought means it might reset. Whatever the case. So when you see this 15 minute here, you can see that you can the the, the first candles that start appearing will appear on the five and 15 minutes. I would say if when we start to see those reversals, and I say hey. Here comes the reversal candle. Uh, start tracking it on the 15 minute and then look at it whether it has longevity to stick on the one hour. Does that, do you know what I just said? In other words, the beginnings of the, of the, of the, of the, the, the beginnings of the move come off the 15 minutes, whether or not it has, it, it, whether it'll be a big fat candle or not can only be seen on the one hour. So in, all, in, so in answer to your question, depending on the speed and time frame you have, if you're looking to do an intraday trade, then you have to rely on the, uh, on the 5 and 15 for entry, and you have to rely on the 15 and the 1 hour for your exit. All right? So... And of course, my alerts are there, so you know you you, you can see what what I'm seeing, uh, and then you can match it. If you're looking for a multi-day swing, what? Who cares what a 15 minutes is doing? On a multi-day swing, you have to rely on the one hour, and the four hour. There. And honestly, if you if I move all the drawings out, the multi-day picture on the market looks pretty damn good for now. Look at this. Looks like a nice pattern, right? There you go. All right? So on a multi-day swing, like the I always say AGN and stuff because we have a history with that. You want to look at the swing charts I'm posting, and on your own screen, you want to look at the four-hour and the daily. If, the, if those patterns don't change, 15 minutes will simply blow you out of the trade, and you'll have a pain, a bucket of regret, a day down the road when the stock is up four bucks. Got it? Hey Frank, did you have a, the Friday moving average in there, the yellow line? Yes, this is the yellow okay. line. This is the okay. yellow line. Uh, there's your yellow line. Uh, looking pretty okay on the four hour for now. Um, right. Yep, looking no, I, okay. I just, I just want to point out that the uh, Friday uh, moving Move. average is very nice. It look up on uh, Friday, last Friday. You see the dropping down, and they are way below that line. And then Correct. if you stay in there, you make money. 
You're absolutely okay. correct. Let me explain this in simple terms to uh, other people. Thank you for bringing that point up. The five-day moving average acts as major support for active traders. When the five-day moving average, which is a yellow line that I use, are starting to move higher, you see that? You're starting to move higher. This is the four-hour chart on the S&P 500. Let me show you some similarities between what is going on now and what happened, uh, let's say, um, not Brexit, Brexit was too big a wider range. What happened here, see this yellow line? See the pattern on this, right? Is what happened here as recently as, um, as, recently as the 4th of August, okay? These are important lines to keep in mind. As the market climbs, the five-day moving average becomes the level of support. Please, for people who are trading, Use the five-day moving average as a level of support. The shape and trajectory of the five-day moving average also gives you an indication whether the market has bottomed or it wants to move higher a bit. When a five-day moving average is crashing, it will always act as a major resistance and keep on defeating you despite how many times the market goes higher. But once it changes direction, and I would say it changes major direction over S&P 2151, that Tim brought out and shows here also, right there. The five-day moving average at that point will have a trend change. The trend change is not going to last for maybe more than two days. It'll probably get here, retest this, uh, this, um, retest the 34 and the 50, and yes. come down again. Will it have to come down all the way here? No, there's no rule says it's going to come down all the way here, the market, I mean, or the five-day, but it simply hit major resistance here. So that's it. Um, what is the main difference between the toss and the quad? How do I try it? Okay, oh, yeah, I'll send you the link. I read you the thing. So guys, um, it's uh, it's two o'clock. As you can clearly see, my sessions always run uh, overboard. It's always a pleasure, and I mean that, okay? And everything that I say uh, in the chat room and stuff, take it constructively. We're all traders here. When we're on the trading floor, we got thick skins. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and again, I wish everyone well. It's gonna be a very busy week. It's gonna start off on tonight. After the market, I will uh, I will do a quick um, I will do a quick pre-market uh, 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 summary uh, early tomorrow morning to give an indication of how things are opening up. We have a lot of things going on here. We have the unfortunate pipe bomb in New York City. My son has to you know be in class tomorrow at 10 a.m. and uh, you know we're all worried. So uh, as uh, so the point is, will that affect the markets? Might. OK, uh, depending on, you know, uh, what they find out. And most importantly, uh, terrorist incidents, generally speaking, just so you understand, um, on U.S. soil, and this is kind of unfortunate. I mean, if you, markets are uh, this just, they're just emotional, emotionless beasts. If there is a tragedy and stuff, markets generally come down a little bit, then rally like crazy. OK, I'm a survivor of 9-11. I know that. All right. And you guys have seen that so many times. All right. We got the bomb that we had the, the, the shooting spree by that uh, uh, Islamic jihadi guy, whatever, in Florida. Terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, and then you had this and that. What do markets do? The markets pulled back a little bit and then rallied like crazy. So in a weird way, it, it the markets want to show that we're not going to be broken. They, 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 they rally hard. So we might have a down opening tomorrow. Uh, based on the New York incident, uh, but aside from that, I um, I always monitor 24/7 any of the global events that are taking place. There's nothing out there right now so far that's telling us that uh, um, that uh, you know we will have some sort of you know dramatic opening. But I will do a uh, quick 15-minute um, uh, uh, pre-market um, uh, pre-market report tomorrow morning. So we're all ready. Take all this into account. And thank you for being here, guys. All right. Thank you. Okay. God bless you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Yes, I'll be uploading this uh, uh, soon. Okay. And then all send me the link. Thank yes. You. I'll, uh, pu I'll put all the emails in that link. It'll send you that notification, and then you can access it. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.